Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar presentation. This is Michael Saltzman, and I'm the Director of Digital Products at Blue Sky Bio. I hope everyone's staying safe and staying healthy and staying home during these times. We are continuing our viral dental education webinar series. Today, we actually have two presentations scheduled. We have this one, and we have a presentation starting at 1 p.m. Eastern time, which will be delivered by Dr. Michael Scherer. Please stay up to date with our webinar schedule, blueskyplan.com forward slash webinars 2020. From there, you can see the schedule for upcoming webinar presentations, and you can also access past recorded presentations. And just to clarify, if you're watching the presentation live, then as usual, we'll be sending the CE credit directly to your inbox. And if you're watching a recording, then just complete the 10 question multiple choice test and we'll be able to send you the CE credit. If you have any questions during the presentation, please enter them into the Q&A question and answer box so they could be addressed during the presentation, towards the end of the presentation. And today's presentation was uh, how, uh, Dr. Luca DiRenzo from Edific IT in Italy helped uh, make the introduction and helped organize and arrange the presentation today. So thank you very much. And if you're in Italy or thereabouts, you should definitely check out their website. They're doing fantastic work in dentistry with Blue Sky Plan and otherwise. So check out their website. And Luca, thanks so much for the introduction and for helping make today's webinar presentation possible. Today, we are going to hear a presentation on the full digital workflow in orthognatic surgery. And we have with us from Rome, Dr. Ramieri. And Hi. thank you for joining us today. Thank you, thank you for the invitation. He graduated medical school in 2008, specialized in maxillofacial surgery in 2013, and then achieved a PhD in new technologies in maxillofacial surgery. Okay, so before we jump into the dental stuff, um, I wanted to ask you a few questions. How's everything going in Rome and Italy? What are you doing during this time period? What's the atmosphere and the feeling like in that part of the world? Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you for the invitation and thank you for this opportunity, first of all. Uh, the situation in Rome, it's, uh, it's kind of safe. And uh, I, I just would like to show the, the real situation in the streets. Uh, coronavirus changed our lives forever, I think, everyone's life. But in Rome, it's uh, almost safe. The, the real problem is in the northern uh, part of Italy, but it's going better. We, we, we really need to hold on everyone, every, uh, everywhere in the world. Uh, don't underestimate this uh, uh, pandemic disease because it's uh, really serious. It's something that really exists. And uh, just stay care, stay home if you can, protect yourself, your loved ones, and uh, follow my webinar for one hour so you would be safer. And are there discussions about uh, people going back to work, about dentists going back to work? Yeah, uh, it should be about the 4th of May. This is the, the deadline. We, we really don't know the, the, the roadmap that would be like uh, shops before then, restaurants and uh, doctors, we don't know when. I'm sh uh, my activity is shut down since two months. Because we are working on the mouth, th there would be much problems with the sprays of the drills. So uh, they, they still need to, uh, the government uh, hasn't uh, wrote down uh, any directive for uh, PPE. And so we're just waiting. I, I think in the next 10 days, the situation would be more clear for everyone. And what have you been doing with your time over the past uh, month or six weeks? Uh, to be honest, I have a four years daughter. So I played uh, Frozen, uh, Elsa, <laughs> and uh, everything like that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, uh, because my wife, she's working at the hospital. And uh, I held a lot of webinars and uh, some uh, uh, Q&A for the patients on Instagram, you know, this stuff. Uh, just kept up with my work, uh, publication, research, something that you never do. So that was the opportunity to do something that was uh, really unusual. 
Very good. And uh, your practice pre-corona, of course, are you doing mostly orthognatic surgeries? Are you, does that make up the entirety of your practice? Yeah, uh, I, I do um, mostly orthognatic surgery. Uh, I do uh, two cases a week, about two cases a week. And um, I, I also do implants, oral surgery, bone grafts, uh, wisdom teeth, this stuff. But uh, my, my hope is that uh, I will leave this stuff uh, really soon, I hope so, and I will dedicate myself to my passion. This, this is not a work. This is uh, something that you, you really need to love because uh, it takes a lot of time and you will see uh, how much effort you need to do just one BTO. And so that's the goal. That's the, the objective, to be an orthopedic surgeon. Uh, uh, that's a really great attitude to say it's not your work, it's your passion. That's... Uh... Yeah, they say you'll never work a day in your life if uh, that's your attitude. Yeah, th that's true. That's true. That's amazing. That's amazing. Okay, so enough uh, enough discussions. Let's uh, go on with the presentation. Okay, so uh, I just want to uh, to show two very easy instruments that uh, we have on Blue Sky Plan. It's a uh, free software, so why don't use it? And uh, the first one is uh, uh, about segmentation. We need segmentation during orthognatic surgery. Sometimes you can do for small surgeries, but sometimes it's very useful to, for uh, bigger surgeries for, to have, um, um, sorry, but this is the, the good thing in life, uh, to have pre-segmented uh, bones. You just get into your project. I won't go through any part because we have a lot of uh, things to say about uh, surgical uh, VTO and orthognatic surgery, but just to show you that even a free software, very good one like uh, Blue Sky Plan can offer you some uh, solution. Just uh, some, okay, we can close here. We can do the panel, we can, uh, okay, it's already open. You have this tool, advanced jaw segmentation. You can get through the, all the steps, it's a really, like a wizard, it's very easy. You do next, then you do what they ask, then you do next, then you do next, and you go, uh, you can define your mandible like, like this, and then you go next. It, it asks every, every, every step, it's very easy to do. And at the end, you have an STL models of your mandible. I'm sure that everyone knows this, so I won't go through this, but it's something that can be also important for uh, orthopedic surgery when you need the, uh, a clearer STL model. Anyway, I'm going to uh, to show the other tool that it's uh, the cephalometric analysis. And uh, also that one, it's uh, useful because if you don't have any fancy software, you can use the, if you are an orthodontist, you can use the, the cephalometric tool of, of uh, Blue Sky Plan. Just, and that's it. I have like three, three-dimensional software open at the moment. So it takes a little bit of time, but we will go through this. Okay, so you can import your CD. If you don't have your actual uh, uh, B-dimensional lateral self, you can build one from the CD scanner. And I think it's also, so you just go, okay. We wait for a couple of seconds and uh, you can adjust the rotation, the pitch, the yaw and everything you want. You have your uh, very nice lateral self. You can uh, select uh, the pattern of uh, cephalometric analysis that you want. You put all your dots and uh, it gives you back the analysis. Then you can have a screenshot for your reports. But I'm not going through this and I need to free my uh, computer from uh, overload. So I'm, I'm closing the blue sky plan. Uh, let's start from the, the clinical analysis of the cases we are doing today. This is a very nice case of uh, asymmetry. This is a, a right condylar hyperplasia. There are a lot of, of uh, clinical issues, but today it's a more a technical lesson. It's not about uh, clinical or uh, surgical indications, much more about how to reach uh, the VTO. So um, I'm skipping this passage 
uh, every patient that, that I visit goes through a three-dimensional scan of the face. It's made with, a, of course, with the software. The software gives you uh, some pictures, uh, 3D face scan. The pictures are like this, doing from different angles. Then the software puts everything together and you have a, a three-dimensional face scan. But I would like to go step by step on the software that uh, I'm using. So we, we do like a new case, a new patient. Uh, when you start a patient on this software that is Dolphin Imaging, uh, it's nice to start from DICOM. So you build uh, the, the, the patient folder from uh, the information of the CT scan. So the first step for me, it's uh, opening the comb beam of the patient. If you have a, a real CT scan, not a comb beam one, it's also uh, it's better than the comb beam. We will go through this later, but CT scan, the actual one, it's there are uh, much more information than in comb beam. So, uh, he recognizes that it's the same patient. So we, we have to go a uh, little different. When you, when you import your comb beam, this is what happens. It, it loads every slice and it gives you a 3D reconstruction of the skull uh, as a first glance. And the first thing that we have to make is to orient the skull to have a, a, a proper position. We can discuss uh, ears about what is the proper, uh, proper position, uh, but uh, we, we just, I just will show you my routine. So uh, this is the model. Uh, I, I like the white background. So let's put the white background. Okay, uh, this is the model. Uh, she is an asymmetric patient and we have to say which is the orientation of the skull in the space. So the first step is going to orientation. This tool makes you uh, rotate and adjust the position of the face. If you go up here, you can just rotate on the middle point. If you uh, do like this, you, uh, you do the rotation in this uh, axis and you can uh, put right, left, uh, bottom, facing up. You can just adjust the position of the face. Uh, my uh, referrals usually are the orbital rings that are usually, usually, I say usually because sometimes they are not symmetric. So this is the first step. Then I go to uh, frontozygomatic suture. And as you see, it's, it's kind of straight. She is kind of straight. So. This is my frontal assessment of uh, the uh, skull position. Then I go on the lateral self. We can discuss uh, even here ages about uh, what it's uh, the real position, the natural head position, their net uh, natural head position. I don't want to go through this. I tell you what I do and I think it's um, uh, the normal head position. So I put, uh, the parion point here and the orbital point here in uh, on the line, like the Frankfurt plane. And uh, according to my experience, this is a, a, a real reliable uh, plane. But if you like the natural head position, you can uh, the true vertical line. You can use the true vertical line. You can use whatever you want. So after you have done this, you just say okay. There is another option. To, to do the alignment and uh, it's uh, using a three point plane. So you say, I would like to, to drop these points and the first point is nasion. Then you rotate the head and you put the other one, solid, it's better. You put the other one on basion. And the third one, just want to see which one is. The third one that is, uh, this one, let me just shift a little bit. We go inside. I've put the Bayesian, I've put the Nasian, and uh, I, I put this third one in the middle of the posterior clinoid process. Then I straighten up my face and I say the software, this is vertical according to me. And as you see, it matches perfectly uh, with the one I made before. This is very useful for patients, for example, with amyfacial microsomia that have also uh, the skull involvement. involvement. Uh, I hope that everyone uh, can hear me well. Uh, uh, I will check the, the questions now and then, but uh, let me go through. 
So this is the orientation and we can save. We can save the orientation and we, we can also save multiple orientations for the patient. And I would say, okay. So straighten up the patient. There is something that is not good. You see, if I say, give me the front of view, the, the position of the head is not correct. So I go back to orientation. And of course, we just forgot to adjust this. So I'm on the lateral view. Don't, don't forget to change frontal and lateral view. Then you say, okay, so now it's correct. Now we have to build up the digital, uh, uh, all the digital aspect of uh, our patient. So the first, uh, the first one I'm going through, it's the digitalization of the teeth. There is a lot of talk about which, uh, which one is the best solution. You can have your intraoral scanner, you can do the intraoral scan, it's perfect. You can do uh, the scan with the scanner of the models. You can do the CT scan of the plaster models. You can also do the uh, CT scan of the tray with the alginate because alginate is uh, radio opaque. So, uh, and then you develop from the negative of the, of the impression, you can develop a model of the, uh, of the team. So there is no limitation. It's just up to you, whatever you have in your practice, you, you use it. But then you have to uh, match the, the teeth with uh, the teeth coming from the CT scan. So the, the real teeth that are coming from the dental uh, impression have to be put in the teeth of the CT scan. So how do we do? We import here upper and lower arch in occlusion. Uh, I will uh, replace them. No, so we don't lose time, but I, I just go to, uh, to see what I do. So we are here. The models are, uh, are already in place. So let's see here. You see the models here. The first thing is to sculpt out the models. It's very important. When you have your, uh, your scan, the first thing that you have to do is to clean up everything except the teeth. So you don't need any gums. So you can clean also this you don't need it because it will, it will confuse the, the software over imposition. So remove as much as you can. Be, the time that you are losing here, it uh, uh, gets back to you later. So even here, if you want, you can remove all the gums. It's uh, kind of easy and quick. So we go through this, we go through this. Then you have to say, to the software, how uh, these uh, teeth have to be aligned on the CT scan. And uh, Dolph, there is a, an automatic superimposition. Uh, sometimes your model can come out from the scan like this. So it's tilted somewhere. So my suggestion is to go, first of all, to go here and to do a, a first rough orientation of the model. So you put the model Okay, so you put the model straight. Sometimes there is a, a, a yaw. Then here you put it back on the face. Then here you put it back on the proper height of the face. So you, you just put it closer to the position where it's supposed to be. Then you see this is uh, the central incisor. You put it forward. Now Dolphin has the opportunity of doing the out of superimposition and that's what he will, it will do, I, I hope so. Just wait a few seconds. Maybe I can close this so it's quicker. And even this one. Okay, let me see if there is any question. No question mm -hmm. to the moment. Okay. Uh, so how do we check if it's correct? There is a, a color map here. And when it's dark blue like this, it's okay. Uh, we can do the same thing for the lower jaw. When you import the models, usually the technician uh, raise the hand by Rigo. You can type the question I go through, then I will answer when it's, uh, when it's time. Right, if there are any uh, questions, you could type them into the Q&A box. 
Yes, yes, I'm checking. No one wrote yet, but someone just raised the hand. So if uh, Enrico, that is a friend of mine, just wants to make uh, a question, you can write down and uh, at the proper moment we will answer. Anyway, uh, when you get your dental scans uh, out of the box of the technician, usually they are in occlusion. So you, you have to put this occlusion onto the model or sometimes you need the uh, sometimes you need a, a surgical occlusion, but that would be another topic. Uh, let's stay simple for today. Uh, why CBCT is not good, sir? I will show you immediately. Uh, let me finish the, the model and then I will, uh, uh, I will tell you the, the, the answer to the, the limitations of uh, CBCT, that it's, it's what I use every day. But when I have a, a real CT scan, I'm much happier. Uh, so we have put the, the models here and uh, I don't want to say because I've already done it. Um, I can show the models that are in place. So models are in place. Now uh, what I'm missing is the soft tissue, the soft tissue of the patient. And there are two ways of putting the soft tissue on a CT scan. The first one is to create the soft tissue from the volume that comes from the CT, like this one. And usually when you open, it starts like this, that you adjust, you see here, there is a, a cursor. You just adjust what, what you think it's the correct segmentation for a soft tissue. You create a surface. And uh, uh, you have this model and this model goes, you, you can click on save now, you click okay. And the models goes here. Then you, you can also, uh, decide the transparency, but these are just for fancy reason and to, to be cool when you show the patient what you have done for him. The other way, uh, and that's my routine, it's to add uh, a general surface, STL or OBJ, taken with a, a facial scanner. So I import this one, general surface, and uh, it gets me back to my computer and it asks for the position, this is the position, this is the 3D face. I have also, I have a only, sorry, I have only this object to put inside. And here there is a, a, another very technical aspect of uh, patient digitalization and we will spend a few minutes. As you can see, the orientation on the X, Y, Z axis is not proper. So the first thing, it's very easy, it's like this. Again, first step is sculpting. When you do the superimposition, you cannot uh, hope that uh, the software will, will uh, manage the whole surface. So we limit the superimposition, automatic superimposition to uh, the place of the face that it's more reliable, the central part. So you cut out here, you go to uh, overlay superimposition. Again, th this is the window that uh, helps you in make, uh, making a, a rough uh, repositioning of the model. You just need to be closer. It doesn't have to be perfect like this. And then you ask the software to do the superimposition. Sometimes it works, sometimes not. In this case, I would, I would say not. <laughs> so let's go back and let's be a little bit more accurate in the first repositioning like this. And we can also adjust like this, something like this. I think it's a little bit tilted, but let's see if this way it's working. No, there is something that it's, it's not working properly there. Anyway, we will solve this. This is what happens every day. This is why it takes hours to do uh, a, a VTO, this is why it's time consuming and you really need to be passionate for this surgery because uh, sometimes you get mad with the, with the software. I think that we can help him like this, doing something like that. Okay, maybe, maybe it will work now, let's see. No. He, he likes in the middle and do less move. Anyway, uh, I've done it previously, so uh, I don't want to waste time, uh, too much time. I think it, it's, it's cool like this. To see if it's cool, you just go back to sculpting and you uh, 
you undo your scouting, undo all. So you have back a big model here and you go on uh, overlay superimposition. And now I think that uh, now our model is correctly matched. Sometimes uh, patients have different expressions between pictures and CT scan. The other issue is whether if you have a cone beam that it's made lying on a table or if you have a cone beam that it's made uh, staying straight. So when, you, when it's lying on a table, sometimes you have some uh, uh, drop back uh, of the, the cheeks and there is a little uh, discrepancy between uh, uh, cone beam CT scan and uh, facial scan. Anyway, now we have, uh, I'm not saving this because I've already done it. Now we have uh, our digitalized patient. So I can decide what I want to see and I want to see a real face and the models, everything with a bit of uh, transparency, opacity like this. Okay, so I have my patients and I'm ready uh, for doing evaluation. I'm, I'm stopping a few seconds to answer uh, the first question, why CBCT is not good. Uh, the answer is this one. Uh, when you deal with, and I, I really want to thank uh, Alessandro Manzoli that I think it's watching us uh, because uh, uh, I, I was getting crazy with, uh, with his answer and he's the one of the dealer and technician of the software and he just uh, gave me the answer. When you uh, deal with CT scan, you deal with Ounsfield uh, density. So you have uh, uh, a proper, uh, value for each voxel of its bone or it's not bone. When you deal with a uh, cone beam CT scan, you deal with grayscale. And uh, there is a, an area here between bone and soft tissue. And uh, it's about half millimeter, to one to half millimeter. And you don't know if it's bone or soft tissue. And you can see it here, Let, let's go on the zygomatic carriage. And you see here, uh, this box, you have to check this, the box why I point, while I point at the bone. When I'm at the bone, it's 1,009. When I'm in soft tissue, it's minus 90. There is a, a no man uh, land here where we don't know if it's bone or it's soft tissue. This is crucial, even for your uh, guided oral surgery for uh, creating custom made mesh, for creating uh, uh, surgical guides, this is the problem why sometimes they don't fit. I hope that I have answered the colleague Prabhu Gandhi. We have another, in case of the patient having a maga feelings, how do we do the procedure? Oh, okay. Uh, uh, we do the CT scan. Uh, uh, I'm answering the second questions to Prabhu that it's very interested, I think. Uh, if you have any artifacts for the teeth, you need to have dental scan. Otherwise, the whole CT scan will be ruined by the artifacts, you need to train your technician to do protocols to minimize the effect of uh, uh, dental treatment. So let's see what we can say about this patient. She's very good looking, but she's asymmetric. She has almost a, a nice occlusion. It's not perfect, but it's working. And she comes uh, in particular for aesthetic reason. Uh, I just want to remove everything. I just want to see the occlusion. So we start from here. There is a midline shift that we want to be corrected. There is a, a kind of good occlusion. Uh, if you look at the canine and molar class here, and also here, if we look at the molar and canine class, there is a, a contraction of this segment, but not in the molar. So we won't do any expansion of the maxilla because the uh, molar diameter is uh, uh, correct between uh, right and left side. We just have to change the position of the mandible and then orthodontic tissue will expand this. She already had an orthodontic treatment and she doesn't want an extensive orthodontic treatment. So uh, this case of a surgery first. Uh, clinically speaking, this is a condylar hypoplasia. So we have studied the condyle both with a, an MRI uh, that didn't show anything particular. And um, also with a, a bone scan, scintigraphy, SPECT, single photon emission computer tomography to assess whether this was growing or not. This was growing. So in, in the plan, we have to take into account that this is growing. 
So uh, let's do some measurements. It's easy uh, with this, any software, with three-dimensional software, uh, not to do only uh, bi-dimensional cephalometrics. And we will do also that, but we, will, uh, we, we can put some uh, this to midline. We can do some measurements. We can see the maxillary cant very clearly. It's one millimeter in the front. It's a three and a half in the posterior part. Then we can also measure the discrepancies between, between the two condyles in length and in position. So we are starting to put together some elements for the surgical program. We know that she has a growing uh, right condyle that has to be treated. Uh, she has a good occlusion, but uh, there is a, a canting of the maxillary and uh, mandibular plan. Uh, I think there is someone writing. Don't write on the chat. You have to write, okay, on the question. I know you scan one of the several parts allow the chart to articulate. Um, my to answer to Joel Rosenfeld, uh, my technician uh, does a separate and um, a real occlusion. So I have two set of files and I decide uh, depending on the case. In this case, I let the software do because it's, it was very easy to match the the, uh, the the teeth on the CD scan. Sometimes it's not that easy. So I want to, the occlusion to be uh, set inside the, uh, the, the digital, digitalization of the occlusion. So um, these are the main aspects. We have to correct the occlusal cant. We have to correct the midlines. We have to correct the condyle. And one more thing, uh, orthognatic surgery, uh, it's also aesthetic. Patients come because they don't chew well, maybe. Patients come because they um, don't breathe well, of course, but uh, most of the times uh, they come because they don't see themselves correctly. They don't feel uh, uh, comfortable with their appearance, even if she's really good looking, but she wanted a more pronounced chin. So this is another uh, clinical aspect that we have to take into account. She will do a slight counterclockwise rotation to advance the chin and to improve a little bit the facial appearance. So how do we, uh, do we go back to uh, two-dimensional uh, analysis when we have all these instruments? I think that we still have to uh, consider that always. I always do also two-dimensional and um, I didn't say anything, but you have this button here to build all the X-rays uh, and you can do apply. This is for lateral ceph. Uh, when you reconstruct uh, lateral ceph from CT scan, it's very nice because you can do also half scan. Like in this case, uh, we would assess if uh, is a uh, class two on one side or class three on the other side. Anyway, this is a, one of the window that we can have, but we can highlight all the structures as much as we want, as we can, it's very nice. And we can say, do just one side or the other half. We can measure both the, the two halves of the face and uh, compare the results. Uh, we can do the, the frontal. It's not needed anymore when you have 3D and when you have a digital, um, uh, digital uh, orientation of the uh, the facial arch. I don't do any facial arch anymore. Uh, the face bow, I mean the face bow, sorry. So, but you have this instrument and if you want, you can use it. And if you have any distortion due from the posterior skull base, you just leave uh, out the skull base. So the image is clearer and I mean, 3D is, it's, it's not the next, big, the next big thing, it's the past big thing. We need to go further. This is just the past. And even to do panoramic, it's very accurate. You can define here the width of your panoramic, usually here above the zygomatic arch, it's okay. Usually here, just below the chin. You put this uh, uh, light blue line here to remember where is the condyle. The condyle is here, you design your arch. And then you can say, I just want to apply. And you build your x-rays. Uh, it's important because this patient looks like an hemifacial microsomia. 
and uh, you see it's maybe a very uh, like an S1 uh, hemifacial microsomy. Um, but on the opposite side here, she's actively growing and she's about 30 years old. So we need to take care of this, but we need to speak with the patient that the volume of this area, it's uh, lesser than this one. So our surgery won't be 100% perfect because even if we straighten up the, the face on the framework, this area will have some defects and we will uh, deal with the, this defect or with a bone graft later or with a prosthesis or with a uh, fat grafting or hyaluronic acid. There are a lot of techniques you can, you, you need to be able to manage everything. The CT scan in uh, closed mouth, Gandhi, and uh, I don't know whether Connor in, yeah, this is a good question. The second question is uh, how do we know if the, the position of the condyle is uh, in the condylar relation, it's correct. Uh, when you do orthognatic surgery, if you, if you think that you are able to put back the condyle in the CR, you need a preoperative CR. Otherwise it's not needed because you won't put it all ever, almost ever in the same exact position. Even if I will show you at the end of this case that with the, some technical skills you can. So the answers, uh, someone raised the, the hand and we're waiting for your question. So we have done with this, uh, we know what we would like to do. So now we have to go through surgery. We have to prepare the models to be treated. So uh, I will go, as you see, I do my own uh, video and I do a second video with the patient because sometimes the patient uh, has different point of views and uh, of view, sorry, and they add or remove something that you have in mind. So always speak with the patient. This is the most powerful aspect of uh, pre-visualization. You don't have to show them to say, I'm going to make your face like this, but it's something that you have to talk about with the patient to see if your goals match their expectatives. This is my uh, way of thinking on orthognatic surgery. So let's go here and we will go through every aspect of the creation of a, a treatable model in uh, um, orthognatic surgery. So let's go back to the first step. In the meantime, if there is any question, yes, I think there is something. Uh, no, I think I've done it. Okay, so the first step that the software asks is to define some macro area. The macro area uh, is uh, what you want to be shown on the 3D model. So uh, this line has to be put on the second molars at the end of the second molars here and here. Uh, this one should be put on midline, uh, upper incisor or lower incisor, it's almost the same. This one should be on the occlusal plan, almost, it's not really important. Then you have to put this uh, uh, little dot on the, the part that it asks, this is mandibular proximal segment, but on the uh, cortical bone. So we have done this and we can save always. A lot of time you do everything, the the computer crashes and you swear. So every passage you just save and then you click next. I want to save again and to click next. So I will do, saving that I have to do everything back with you. And here again, th this is cropping. We have to um, create a model. So you see there is something missing here and there is uh, something missing here. So you have to be careful in the fine. Is there any question? Uh, I think there is a question here somewhere, no? Okay, so uh, this is a little bit annoying. You have to rotate. The more you do here, the less you will do in the next step. So take your time to be accurate here in defining the, the bone part of the maxilla. And then you say, okay, and it's going to get better, okay? And here you have, uh, it, it's not a hound speed, as I told you, it's a gray scale, but you can put more bone or less bone. The problem is that the more bone you put, also the teeth widen. So when you are um, 
putting back the, the, the teeth model, you will have some discrepancy here. And this will cause your uh, splint, if you do one, to be not perfect. So uh, according to someone, it has to be uh, 550, but it, th there's no rule. It really depends on the machine you have. Let's say about 600, I think it's okay. Apply. And so I have my uh, initial model. Then I go to the mandible and I do the same thing. Because I have the, the, the dental models, I don't need to be uh, really accurate on that because the dental models uh, solve you a lot of problem. And I will show you why. Then you uh, isolate the, the ramos of one side and you put the ramos in the correct position and you can apply. And sometimes if you put too much density, you have all the fossa up here to be removed digitally. So uh, take your time also here and try to have the cleanest model you have because um, there is no rush. And uh, the more time you lose in this passage, the, the more time you will save later. So it's almost good. Let's go back to Mandible because we have to put Ramos's and uh, Remy and uh, Mandible together. And so we have our model. We, we don't care about this right now. And I go to save. Uh, and I'll go next. Uh, when you don't have the dental impression, the cleanup drives you crazy because you have to do like this. You have to remove everything and you're not accurate and you cannot develop any digital splints from this you you have to do something like this okay and uh, for example if you have any uh, scattering from uh, any dental reconstruction it, it, it's really a mess but we have the model overlay so i want to be the model lower jaw together with the mandible and so it's much easier because i just remove everything that it's not teeth so very easy very quick So the digital impression of your patients, it's mandatory if you want to do orthognathic surgery. Okay, so it's clean, you see? And it matches perfectly. Same thing on maxilla and upper teeth and maxilla. And once again, if you don't have the models, you have to separate and it's not accurate, but we have the model, so we don't care. And it takes us three seconds instead of 40 minutes. And also your wisdom teeth, we don't care because we, we don't take into account. We will remove during surgery. So our model is clean. Always check for the posterior nasal spine. You need to have the posterior nasal spine here. Otherwise you will miss something and you have to go back to crop and to segmentation. So we have built our model. It's nice, it fits. And we save and we go forward. Now we design our osteotomies. Uh, in this case, I know that we, I need a, a double jaw surgery and a condylar surgery. That this software, it's, it's not designed for uh, condylar surgery, but I will show you just uh, a way to estimate the, the problem. So I select here. If you are planning to do a custom made fixation device for splintless technique, you need to do like this. If you're not planning, you can also leave the cure, but it's, it's just a matter of uh, uh, digital design of uh, any custom made device. So you do the cut again and it's done. Then you have to design the mandible. Uh, the, the quick cut, it's uh, very, we can do the result, it's very easy. Because it's so three-dimensional, it's not easy to understand where to put the dots. The quick, uh, the quick cut helps you because, um, let's go back to quick cut. It puts the mandible in a very easy position to, uh, to design that it's this one. You put here above the uh, speaks, you design your, well, it's not working. Reset cut line, sorry. You put your dots here. Reset cut lines. Oh, sorry, quick cut. Okay, and you can just adjust here. You go 
one dot here, one dot here. This one, as long as you like the sagittal split. I don't like very long sagittal split, but in, when I needed advancement, I wanted it long. I show you the difference. You check that the border is correctly designed. This is a kind of, in class three, sometimes I go short like this. So it's shorter in class two, of course, I go longer like this. Okay, so I've done one side. I've done the other side. Uh, I didn't say cut. Right proximal segment cut. Okay, let's go to left proximal segment. The same above the speaks, then you design the upper part. Then you check that here, everything is on the border and then you go cut now. And then you go on the chin. Uh, in this case, uh, uh, I didn't make the chin on the patient, but I will have to. So let's let's imagine now that I want to do it. There are a lot of ways to design the chin. If you want a very long uh, genioplasty, like a, almost a chin wing, or if you want a short one, uh, I think that like this, it's okay. Just adjust it and you watch here while you move the, the model. So this is better and a little bit longer here. Okay, so we do cut now. So we have our models and uh, I don't like this. Even if it doesn't really matter, I don't like to, things to be not real. So there is something not working. This is too high maybe. Just let me do something a little bit better, but I can do better. I can do it like this. I can do it like this. Okay, this is more realistic. And uh, I save. Uh, let me check if there is any question. No, there is not. Uh, I, I do save. Oh, the chin. I didn't cut the chin. Save. And then I go next. Now you have to, to uh, put points. There is a, a sequence of points and uh, you are asked to put the posterior nasal spine. That's why I told you, remember that you are able to see the posterior nasal spine. This is the posterior nasal spine. Then anterior nasal spine. And it's uh, really quick. You, you just skip through this. Uh, very important it's to put these occlusal dots correctly, because this will uh, affect the way you think about surgery. And I will show you why, because this is the articulation of the maxillary cant. It's the, the, the face bow. Then you go through all this passage. Uh, you have the same thing. Uh, let me put back lower incisor tip. It's okay, a little bit higher. You, you can also rotate a little bit. So, it helps you. This is okay. This is canine. It's okay. Canine. This is the sixth, the cusp. This is the sixth at the cusp. All the other uh, points are useful not for analysis, but to more uh, to tell you what movements you are thinking to do. Because it will tell you in three dimensionally how much this has moved how much this has moved, how much this has moved. So this is B-point, Pogonion, Ignatian, uh, Menton, uh, Gonion, uh, Mandible back cut, Condyle inch point, and so on. Then we have to uh, put points on the soft tissue. And there is a, a map of points that you have to put uh, on the lateral profile and also on the frontal view lateral other side and on the front of you. So our model, it's done. Let's see a little bit of adjustment here. I want to save and I want to say next. That's the most important part where we decide how we will treat the patient face and what we will do on the patient face. So, uh, just remove the face for one second. And uh, I start to my planning on the maxilla 
repositioning. This doesn't mean that I would do um, Matilda first. It's up to you. It's up to what you are more comfortable with. But I, I plan first the Maxilla. Let me see what question do we have? Where is the, the, your facial soft tissue? Uh, we can go through this question, Robert Nadeau, later. Uh, just let me finish this uh, this part. So how do we know the, the tilting? We ask here, there is treatment options. You, uh, you want to have the measurements on images when you are in front of you, it's uh, the face bow. So you know how much the face is deviated. This is the midline, the actual midline. So um, let's imagine the traditional uh, face bow. So I put to zero here. So as I told you, we have one millimeter and a half in the front and almost five. I told something less, but that's it. So we need this face, this part to come down a little bit, maybe this to come up a little bit. Uh, depending on where we put the, uh, there is a square somewhere. Echo. If we put here, when we rotate, it will stay on that dot and will come down somewhere here, okay? So just wanna go back because I think that in this case, I want here to rotate and to do something like this. And I watch at the numbers. I watch at the numbers, I watch at the numbers till I'm satisfied and they are similar one side with the other. This is not the correct movement because if I have a correct amount on the posterior aspect, I have a problem anteriorly. So the rotation has to be put somewhere else, maybe somewhere more in the middle. Let's see. Let's go back. This is... Okay, so we see I have one millimeter and a half here. So we need to understand, I don't remember every single case, so I'm doing this with you. Just want to remove the mandible. So I say, don't show me the mandible. Okay, I just want to focus. I want everything to come down here like this. I think this will work better. Three. Uh, there is a problem with the, with the measurement point. My mistake, let's go back to landmark. That's why I couldn't cope with the uh, correction. Let's go back to landmark and this, it's not on the cusp, you see? This is the cusp and this is the millimeter that I was missing. So let's go back here. Now it's better and let's correct the frontal aspect. So it's about, okay, like this. We still have discrepancy here. And sometimes uh, in particular in surgery first, you have to speak with your orthodontist with this because uh, they will face maybe an open bite on this side. Anyway, let me see here. Anyway, there is something also with this point that it's not working because uh, it, it, it's not like that. Of course, there, there are not four millimeters of discrepancy. Let me restore the, the workup that I made, this one. Uh, yes. Okay, so this was the plan. The plan was, you see here, everything matches much better. It's uh, no difference in the frontal part and a very slight difference in the posterior part. So that was the plan to impact a little bit here. Then we will go through the movements and to open this. I just want the mandible back. I have corrected the midlines. I have corrected the position of the mandible. I have decided the position of the mandible. Maybe, maybe there is something like this that should be done. And then you have, you can also, uh, uh, you can also check if the occlusion you are planning it's okay or not. So you have this instrument here, show vertical collision color map. And in a surgery first, we have a tripodic contacts and it's okay. So we have posterior here, posterior here, and posterior here. 
And uh, according to my experience in my practice, this would have been uh, a good result. Uh, maybe some a uh, little bit of your or the mandible to correct a little bit more. Something like that. Remember that the Remy will follow what you do on the face. Like this. Let me see. Yeah. I think that the occlusion now it's much better. Uh, I told you that this patient would have done also the condylectomy. How do we estimate the condylectomy with the three dimensional measurements that we have done at the beginning? And how do we uh, simulate the uh, condylar reposition like this? Uh, I have to say, allow free movement of the condyles, and then I can move the condyle up, uh, the, like five millimeters up. That's important because when I'm in surgery, I have to find back this situation to be sure that I've made everything correctly. And I have to find this situation back, okay? And I have to find this situation back. If I don't find anything of this, there will be a problem. I didn't plan the genoplasty in this case at first, but I, as I told you, I will have to do it. And in this case, would have would have been something like that. So let's go through the step that tells me what I will do to the patient. This is my plan. So there is a, an improvement. There is a counterclockwise rotation, and there is an improvement in the chin appearance. But I want to know the movements. The movements. You have two instruments. You have here show landmark offset and measurement tables, and you have to look at this one. Don't look the first part. This is for motor block surgery. When you do the splints on motor block, you just go here and you look at what happened to all your uh, your points. So I expect that some somewhere uh, the height has increased. In particular, the sixth, so the first molar, uh, has come down four millimeters and thirty five. So here I expect to be four millimeters and a half. Here I expect to be. Uh, uh, one millimeter and a half down. Uh, on the op opposite side, there is a one millimeter and a half up. So there is a, a little bit of overlapping here. And let's see the other side, there is uh, almost nothing. So how do we achieve this uh, perfection? We can do the splint, we can do the mandible first, we can do the maxilla first with a splint, you can do whatever you want, you can do freehand like I've done in this case, and uh, it's up your experience. Then the patient, they, the pa patients always ask how much my chin will be forward because that's why they came for. And you have the measurement here. In total, 11.8 uh, millimeters forward. So it, it's a nice advancement. And uh, Let's go to present. I want to show you this particular aspect because we will go through this in surgery and I will show you some pictures and uh, you can even measure this gap. We just remove the face and uh, I want to measure two dimensionally the, the distance and I want to know exactly how much is this and how much is this if I, if I use uh, intraoperative measurements and I want to see here if there is any overlapping. And here uh, looks like very small overlapping. You can go around, but uh, you need to find during surgery this. If you don't find this, something went wrong in your uh, planning. So uh, the other step, it's uh, the realization of a splint. There is a very easy tool. You can do an intermediate splint if you want to do maxilla first. You can do an intermediate splint if you want to do mandible first. In this case, I would suggest if you use a splint, do a mandible first. Then you open a little bit the gap between upper and lower jaw. And then you uh, lock the position and you start designing the, the splint. So it's uh, almost, it's very easy. It takes you like 10 minutes. Um, you really have to think real. Even if it's digital, you have to think real. This is something that I always say because uh, uh, you are designing something that you will have in, in, in uh, operating room and it will 
drive you mad if you didn't uh, think it was real in this phase, okay? So let's do a gross one. Uh, I don't want to lose time on this because we have some question time now. And um, I can do previous planes, higher resolution or medium, it's, it's not a problem. This is the first splint. We want to do the mandible first. And we have our splint. It can be done, of course, better now. It's very quick. You can uh, put some holes here. And this is the instrument. You can remove some uh, resin here. You can do it uh, thinner here. Uh, you can also write your name on the splint. That, that is something that I always do, Ortoniatica Roma. So Ortoniatica, Orto. Sorry. And then you engrave the splint. It's really cool when you take pictures in operating room. So you have your name there. Um, and that's it. Now I will show you the patient and then I will answer the, uh, the question. So let me go back to Keynote. If there are any other questions, please feel free because we have a uh, uh, few time now to answer your questions. Okay, so this was the patient, the patient at the beginning. Uh, let me close. I don't see my, so I don't see my arrow anymore. Okay. So uh, she was the patient at the beginning. You see, we have a maxillary cant, deviation of the chin, uh, the, the smile, it's not uh, full. We don't see uh, the entire mind of crown. And uh, the profile, it's not bad, but she wants an improvement. That's the preparative occlusion. This is the CT scan that you have seen in every step. And that's the condylectomy. Condylectomy in this case was five millimeters because of a positive uh, bone scan uh, spect in growing condyle. So we removed five millimeters of condyle. We reconstructed the ligament and try to reposition the condyle in the proper position. And I will show you later. At the end of condylectomy, this is the occlusion. Condylectomy alone would have uh, solved the problem of midlines, but the maxillary cant uh, should be addressed with the orthognatic surgery. So after uh, condylectomy, we started with orthognatic surgery. And uh, if you remember, uh, the, the things that I showed you before, the millimeters uh, are perfectly matching. This is a free hand, no splint. And uh, again, this is something really nice to see when everything matches perfectly. Sagittal split, nothing special. I have not done the, the chin. This is two months after surgery, then coronavirus choke. So I don't have any later control, but I mean, she's a perfectly symmetric. She has a very nice profile. The chin is not perfect. She knows, I know, I will do the chin later. And the projection of the mandible, it's very nice. The projection of the mandibular corner. Now, why, why 3D is helpful? Because when you speak with the patient and you show the patient something like this in the middle, and then you have uh, the result and then they complain like I'm not perfectly straight. And then you have a picture like before planning and after, and actually they are perfectly straight. You have something to uh, make the patient more comfortable and more relaxed that the, the result will come after the swelling has gone away. So this is the result. And this is the uh, CT scan. And uh, I think I've made uh, some comparison, uh, the lateral one. I want to show you the lateral one because it's amazing. Um, let me close this. Let me close this. Do not save. Uh, we go on the post stop, post stop, 3D edit. I just want to show you the condylar position after condylectomy and reconstruction of the lateral ligament and disc positioning. That was made by Professor Cascona. He is my mentor. We work together. I do the orthognatic surgery. He does the TMJ. So just one last minute. Then I see that there are a few questions that uh, I would like to answer. And we do the superimposition. This is another nice tool 
because when you do the planning, you, you need also to check that what you have done fits what you have planned. And the tool uh, allows you to, uh, to over uh, to match the the two two different CT scans and to see the difference uh, between before and after. Okay, so uh, before is in green, of course, and the gray one it's after. And you see, let's see from the bottom, the mandible completely shifted on the midline. So we have achieved a, a nice result, but the, the amazing thing is the condylar positioning that it's almost in the same place. Let's see two dimensionally. Okay. So that was the old condyle. This is the condylectomy of the new condyle. And you see it's very close to the original position. Of course, it needs a little bit of remodeling, elastics, and a little bit of orthodontic therapy that will be done. I think that she has done in this period. So that's it. Uh, I finished my, uh, let's say first part. This is just digital planning, it's not clinical issues. And I go through the questions. Michael, if it's okay for you, I go to answer for the questions very quickly. Yeah. Okay. So uh, uh, what are you using to obtain your facial soft tissue scan? Uh, Robert Nadeau. Uh, I use, uh, uh, it's called Life uh, Quantifier. See, I think you, see, you still see my, my screen. So that's what I use. This one is a, um, it's like a photographic machine, but with uh, two different lenses, take one picture at the same time, then the software do, does the rest. And it really works well, it's accurate. So answer done. Gandhi, you have made a, a lot of questions. So do you do, I usually start from axilla in simple cases. In uh, asymmetries, I do uh, mandible first with the splint. In this case, I don't remember why what's not possible, but uh, sometimes it's just a matter of time to uh, print the splint. But uh, uh, in a symmetric case, always start from the mandible with an intermediate splint. So answer live, done. And again, Gandhi, if the patient was some crooked tooth, I would address the pen. Okay, uh, if you have crooked teeth, and you are planning the splint, the splint, will, the splint will fit that crooked teeth because the splint is made on the digital scan and the digital scan shouldn't be later than one week uh, from the day of surgery. So you, you, you can do surgery with a, a scan of the occlusion of two months before surgery. Otherwise it won't fit, of course. Uh, hello, Fabio, my friend. Yeah, Fabio is a uh, an amazing Brazilian surgeon. He has done a fellowship with me in Rome. And he asked, uh, what is the method of acquiring the natural head position? Uh, you just put the patient in the natural head position because you can turn, we go back here. I close this. Let's, let's make it like this is the pre-op. Uh, according to our net, you have a picture or a three-dimensional scan or in natural head position, and you and you simply adjust this to the uh, to the scan or the photo in the uh, natural head position. Three in three D, it really doesn't matter because uh, you can adjust even the, the facial scan to what you uh, observe that is the natural head position of the patient. Uh, we can discuss about this for ages. Uh, the plan is not just the head position, it's many more things that I think you know it. So I hope this answered your question. Gandhi again, our uh, cutting guides. Um, I don't fabricate personally cutting guides. I have uh, uh, this, uh, this um, company that makes for me, it's a uh, 3D thick. 
and uh, they make a whole another process. And uh, I was telling Michael uh, that if he likes, we will do another webinar about that. It's a, a very complex. Uh, it's a very complex uh, problem. Uh, how to minimize the nerve injury with digital planning? Uh, that's something that I always do. The digital planning really doesn't minimize nerve injury, but helps you to do better surgery. And I show you why because you know where it is. You can see it uh, three dimensionally, and in particular, you can measure the distance from the uh, outer cortex of the, the mandible. So uh, it's not a, a surprise. You know exactly where it should be, and uh, you are more precise during surgery. And a little bit of skill is required, of course, for not having permanent. Uh, digital uh, nerve injuries. When you do coronal, I always do before surgery, uh, I always go to check the distance of the nerve from the cortical, the outer cortical, um, outer cortex. And I always go to check here if there is something strange. So also here, usually it's about to two to three millimeters. So this is the way it out. Super planning. Thank you, Dr. al -Zawawi. Thank you, thank you. Luca, Luca is my partner. He is the boss of 3D Fic. Could you have made custom made face in this particular case? Yes. Luca, I could have made uh, uh, custom made splintless surgery. So with uh, 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 digitally designed uh, fixation devices. Uh, you know why I cannot make it every case is like that. Uh, sometimes it's always a matter of uh, budget, but uh, just because more complex, case, this is not a complex case to me. This is a, a straight case uh, like I do every day. When I have a, a worse asymmetries, I, I, you know that I love your uh, custom made plates. Uh, Robert Nadeau, the, this is the answer. And um, if there is interest on this, we can do maybe another webinar on that. Can you use clear liners? Yes, I use aligners in surgery first. It doesn't really matter to me. You can, all, you can also put chewing gum on your teeth if you want to align teeth. I, I just do surgery. So I do the surgery. I plan the occlusion with the orthodontist. This is the, uh, the, um, the most important thing. I cannot plan any case without speaking deeply with the orthodontist uh, about the surgical position. Uh, according to me, this is one very important aspect. Ciao Fabrizio, do you think the use of patient speaking in were better than using the web person? Not? Yes, of course. Uh, I have a, a whole lecture on uh, PSI. Uh, the error we have measured, the, the discrepancy between planets 0.2. So, it's much more accurate, of course, even than uh, splints, but splints are cheaper. And if you do surgery every week, sometimes you cannot afford uh, PSIs for every patient. Uh, Another right position, uh, how to make that? Uh, I think that uh, I've already answered to this question. Do you have experience designing uh, mandibular mid osseal endorphin conjecture in the genoplasty? Uh, I, I don't like a, a mid sagittal uh, split. It's very popular, uh, like in Germany. I don't like it. Uh, I've never met the need for uh, uh, mid sagittal split, uh, and, but you can plan with dolphin and you can do your uh, wafer with that. Do you mind sharing a reason for condylectomy? Yes, Malek, uh, Dr. Malek. The reason was uh, she had an active growth of the mandible for condylar hyperplasia. So we, we have assessed that with MRI. If you study patient for orthognatic surgery, you need to ask all the time, almost all, all the time, TMJ MRI, wide open and closed. And then you go with um, bone scintigraphy, bone scan. And if it's positive, if the discrepancy between uh, one side and the other, it's more than 10%, you have to cut the condyle. Otherwise you will have relapse. A lot of question. Would you consider making a guide for position in the chin in this particular asymmetry? Uh, I think you mean for the next genioplasty uh, can be an option, but usually I go uh, freehand. For this case, it's possible not to do condylectomy. No, it's not possible because the inclination of the ramus would have been different and the, the aesthetic final result would have been different. If you go to look 
uh, the case is I treat uh, of an asymmetry usually if the, there is an active condylar hyperplasia or even if there is a not active, not active, I do the condyle because it gives uh, much more predictable outcomes on uh, symmetry. Uh, how can I go for a fellowship with you? You can write me on Instagram and direct message me and we will arrange. Uh, you mentioned my Instagram uh, right here. Uh, you can also email me. You have the email somewhere. Oh. Anyway, as we change the color. So you can see my Instagram somewhere here. Okay, this is my Instagram contact. You can direct message. If you want, you can also follow me. It's appreciate. But uh, if you have any question or just want to share your opinions, you just text me here. Uh, would you have long-term problem with condylectomy? Uh, I, I've started dealing with condylectomy in 2008 with my mentor now on my own. And at the moment, I haven't had big problems. I mean, no facial injuries or not uh, TNJ dysfunction after surgery because you have to put back the disc in its place and fix it with some device. Uh, there are different uh, different techniques. There is the Wolfer technique. Uh, there is the MyTech anchor that it's the one I use. But if you know TMJ, you have to treat TMJ. If you don't know, it's better not to treat TMJ. But if you want to do orthognatic surgery and you don't know TMJ, uh, I think that you are missing something. You mentioned right conversation, but why don't wait until it grows stop? Because she's 30. Will you wait to have a worse asymmetry so that the surgery would have been more difficult? When we, when we see patients of eight, nine, 10 years that are developing the asymmetry, we do the condylectomy at eight, nine, 10 years so that they don't need a tonic surgery when the, uh, the facial growth is over. I think that I've answered everything. Uh, I didn't, I can just put dismiss, dismiss. If there is any other question. What do you say, Michael? Did we answer to everyone? Yeah, I think so. I, I can just. So if somebody wanted to uh, follow you, learn more from you, so there's the Instagram account and how else could they follow your work and learn more from you? Uh, yeah, I have all my cases published on Instagram. I have a website and uh, I didn't put, I, I share again my screen if you don't mind. So they can go also on my website and it's Maxillo Roma, it's easy. And uh, they find the, the, the email, they can write me there if they want to share even cases. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not like teaching anyone, but you know, sharing opinion, it's better than uh, being on their own. So uh, you just go on here, it's contacts and uh, here you have all my socials. You just write here. I receive the email and I can answer to any question or be supportive if needed. Okay, great. Okay. Let so me I'll just, just see if there is a. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to check if there was any other question, but uh, there's not. Okay. Okay, so I'll just repeat a few things I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation um, regarding the CE will be sent to you via email. If you're watching the recording, complete the 10-question multiple choice test, and we'll be able to send that in. We have another webinar presentation starting in a, a little over an hour. So Dr. Sherer will be presenting on treatment planning, implant treatment planning. So we hope to see you at that presentation as well. And you could see our upcoming schedule as well as recorded webinar presentations on blueskyplan.com forward slash webinars 2020. Okay, so Dr. Ramirez, thank you so much for the time and thank for you. sharing your knowledge. Thank you so much. And uh, Luca, Especially thank you so for much for making this happen and making the introduction. And uh, I hope we're all uh, 
back to work soon, being able to see patients, return to the clinics, and apply a lot of this uh, knowledge that's being taught and being shared. I really hope so. Take care. Be safe. Have a nice Thank day, you, everyone. everyone. For attending. Take care. Be safe. Stay at home. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.